So today we will be discussing about automated production and assembly lines. So basically, before I get into this automated production lines and uh, assembly lines, I just want to quickly go with uh, what do you mean by an automation? Since we have already discussed what is an automation sim, uh, uh, sim and all those things. So I just I quickly say, what do you mean by an automation? In general sense of a mechanical engineer, as a mechanical engineer, I just I would like to define this automation, which refers to the production systems. It is a technology that incorporates and integrates all the traditional engineering fields of electrical, mechanical, electronics with a modern invention of computer technology to operate and control the manufacturing process. Right. That means, I repeat once again, automation is nothing but it is a technology, it is a new technology which incorporates with in integrated traditional uh, engineering fields like electrical, electronics, mechanical, which have been integrated all together with a new invention of computer systems with the software and all those things to operate and control the manufacturing system. That is what we call it as an automation. Basically, this automation can be classified into three ways. One is a fixed automation, second one is a flexible automation, and the third one is uh, uh, fixed, flexible, and variation programmable automation. Basically, this fixed automation is also called as a rigid automation, wherein which the flow lines and the software remains the same thing. And this uh, fixed automation suggests that the type of automation system is said to be unique type of operation production system and cannot be changed whatever the set of operations or the sequence of operations which have been already configured using automation cannot be changed that is it means it is a fixed state. that is the sequence of operations are clearly defined and it is very simple for example if you want to take a fixed automation the examples we can take it as filling up of a, a water bottles or filling up of a beverages or a milk packet or only applying the caps for the bottles preparing the nuts bowls wherein which the sequence of configured positions and the processes are fixed and it cannot be changed so such kind of things we call it as fixed automation what do you mean by a, a programmable automation programmable automation means these programmable automations means which is a suitable for different product configurations. This system reads the program codes and operates accordingly. When a modified program is fed into the system, accordingly the system follows the instructions and changes into sequence of operations. For example, what we can take it is, we can take it as a CNC lathe, CNC milling machines. Though they are flexible that is i mean to say they are programmable they can also be used for a fixed automation say for example if you want to do a threading operations on the tools you can make the threading operation for n number of samples or the work pieces suppose if you want to change the threading operation into facing operation you can change the sequence of operations by changing the program feeding into the system so likewise, we can also use the different applications. Say, for example, for this, we can take an example of NC machine tools and industrial robots. As we have already defined, I will come to that later on. What do you mean by robot and all these definitions? We have already covered in our previous regular classes. But still, I will quickly go with the robotic later on, which are, comes under the category of programmable automations. Now, the third one is flexible automation. This is the latest and preferred automation system in the production industries. In fact, the extension of programmable automation is nothing but a flexible automation. This is a major advantages of this flexible automation is this is the most complex system of all types. Very high flexibility we can get it with respect to the product, variety, batches and production schedule. Very huge investment is required for this actually. Whereas, wherein which the major drawback of this is low, the advantage uh, advantage of this is low production cost compared to the programmable cost. So these are all the three different types of automation systems which are available in the industrial sectors. 
except for the small scale in most of all in the large scale and medium scale industries they follow the flexible automation because the versatility it provides for the production of different products that is a major advantage of this flexible automation i uh, my dear friends i just tell you automation once again it is nothing but incorporating or integrating the traditional engineering uh, sectors like uh, electrical electronics and mechanical and uh, integrating all these three conventional engineering uh, processes with the, the advanced software computer technology in order to increase or increase the production or it may be increase in the quality of the manufacturing so let us discuss how this automate automation can help us in the production and assembly line what do you mean by production production is nothing but converting a raw material into a final finished product that is what we call it as production what do you mean by assembly say number of product produced machineries or entities or elements we are assembling it say for example you will you will produce a gear you will produce a gear you will produce uh, a clutch you will produce the wheels you will produce the sheets and everything you do it gear levers everything you will produce it in the production system when it comes to the assembly line say for example you will assemble the cars first you will take a chassis then you will assemble the wheel then you will assemble the roof then you will assemble the door so this is all called as an assembly lines okay now first and foremost thing is first we shall discuss automation in the production lines automation can be defined as a technology converter which we have already discussed okay to perform a task without a human intervention to improve the productivity and quality is the major motto of this cnc pnc automated guided vehicles and robots are the ultimately which are uh, heart of this automation production lines what are the reasons for the automation maybe my dear friends you can take it as an advantage or you can also take it as a reason to why is the requirement what is the scope of this automation is to increase the objectives of this automation is to increase labor productivity to reduce labor cost to improve worker safety to improve product quality obviously the fourth one i, I feel the fourth one should have been come under the first to improve the product quality to reduce manufacturing lead time what do you mean by mlt manufacturing lead time is also called as mlt mlt is very much important and i just want to define it in one sentence mlt manufacturing lead time is defined as the overall time taken for converting a raw material into a finished product is called as the mlt that is manufacturing lead time that means the overall time required to manufacture a product from its root that is from the raw material is called as a manufacturing lead time as an industrialist or as a production manager i always worried and looking out to minimize the manufacturing lead time irrespective of the product my dear friends to accomplish the last one is to accomplish the processes that can cannot be done manually there are few things which cannot nowadays even to make a hole and remove the bolt also we use uh, machines hand removing machines so we use it so that now we are all uh, got used to this automatic systems okay now there are few more systems like a control system sensors and actuators automated machine tools industrial robotics logic controllers handling systems storage systems identification of systems manufacturing cells assembly lines flexible manufacturing systems these are all the major advantages or the reasons why we should go for automation in the industries next the transfer mechanism now my dear friends as you can see it here this is a power head and these are all the work pieces this is a pallet pallet means it, it is something like a railway track these are all like railway coaches which will be designed or which have been programmed to move in a certain speed and certain amount of time it will stay back over here say for example there is a work piece below this power head maybe it is a drilling holes or it may be a uh, tightening or it may be a packaging or it may be a sealing or it may be a stickering any you can take it as anything so 
these power heads will be performing that say for example if you take a beverages maybe this is a bottle it will fill 200 ml of the milk and it will allow this to go next this bottle will come and occupy this space and it will stay here for maybe around 10 seconds and 20 seconds whatever the time which is required to fill this bottle with the same amount of liquid so this is what we call it as the pallets and this is the track within which it will be moving so this can be a radial or this can be a linear or this can be based on anything say for example if you take the figure b over here the first one may be a filling second one may be a uh, ceiling and the third one may be uh, maybe stickering so all these are after the three operations it will go back and it will join the other lens so this is what we call it as a transfer mechanism okay next one is in process inspection in process inspection means there are most of the industries basically in order to make the inspection you should not reduce the production time you should not stop the production that means once if you stop the production it may cost you around more than it, it will be a costable it will be more accountable you cannot as much as a production engineer or a manufacturer i would always like the process to be continuous in the process itself i want to inspect for example let me illustrate with an example of a uh, lathe machine wherein which a workpiece has been fixed and i'm just turning operation has been carried out while the turning operation it is carrying out i want to see what is the diameter of the what is the amount of material that i am removing my dear friends maybe this workpiece is maybe rotating at 1000 rpm you cannot have a conventional method of a caliper or a screw jet, screw gauge to measure the uh, diameter or the, to measure the amount of material that is been removed so here this is a one gauging head which the use of the sensors I have already told you automation is not meant only for a mechanical it will also utilize the electrical electronic and computer science now what it will do it is we will have we will have one gauging head which will have which will have maybe a, a set of sensors it will take the signal and it will send it to the control unit whatever we popularly call it as machine control unit which he, which we have given it as control unit this machine control unit will take the signal feedback from this gauging head and it will instruct back to this machine tool that means in this the machine tool is a lathe so it will take say for example if the diameter which is required to be maintained for this work which has been done then immediately it will give a signal to the control unit that the diameter of so and so has been achieved so once it takes the signals from the sensor from the gauging head this machine control unit takes the signals and gives the command to the machine tool that is the cnc lathe with converting these signals into electrical signals and convert that into uh, machine tools language and it will send it in 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 light of stop or in light of processing the process this is one now my different there are different automation systems are there which have already discussed in the earlier classes say for example hope you remember this this is a rectangular or a cartesian coordinate robot as a, as this is a cylindrical coordinate robot or this is a spherical spherical coordinate robot there are different robots the physical existence it has been illustrated over here there is the two and four the two and four there are six degrees of freedom and here also six degrees of freedom here also six degrees of this is a revolve uh, this is a rotation this is a revolve and this is an axial movement whereas here this is nothing but can you guess what is this this is a jointed arm robo okay now this is a cartesian this is a cylindrical where it can move up and down and this is a spherical or which we also call it as a popular different polar coordinate system and now this is an articulated or we popularly call it as a jointed arm robot why i am telling you over here is a robot is also comes under the automation i have already told you while talking about the robot robot is nothing but a multifunction manipulator which is designed to do a, a, a number of works okay which is a programmable one it can perform any task so this is one now there are different 
there are different uh, types of uh, uh, flow lines are there in the in the production lines in the production lines in the production lines now you can take this as an l shaped line wherein which this is the starting point of a, a product which will go into the first Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it will be going. That means a raw material will enter it over here, and it will be subjected to a number of operations, which will be directed by different machine tools. Maybe here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are there. All the seven, they are in line. They are all in line, but they are placed in a L shape. Now, this is what you can see. But my dear friends, you might have observed it. If you go to a biscuit factory. A biscuit factory, wherein which you can find a such kind of L shape. So, based on and requirement and floor space available, also plays a vital role in deciding the type of the uh, product uh, lines assembly which we they are going for. Now, here this is an L shaped one. The product will enter it here and it will undergo all these series of uh, processes and it will end up with a finished product. Same for example, the same thing if it is a U-shaped, instead of L-shaped, we will have a U-shaped, nothing much, only thing is the product will move in U-shaped, it moves over, it starts here and it end up over here with a finished product, same thing, we will have a rectangular one, say for example over here, it will undergo, it will undergo and it will go there, okay, next return of work carriers will be over. So this is something like a cycle completely. So this is a L shape, U shape, and rectangular shape, and all these are an example for the line type of line type of the flow lines. Okay, flow lines. What are the advantages of this line flow lines analysis and the flow line with storage? This is accurate and consistent information, faster. Fault, fault identification, identification will be very easy, identification will be very easy, then increased production, improved availability of system, reduced cost, maintenance of quality and quantity, improved safety conditions. All are all the examples for the automated production lines. Then what are the drawbacks? Technology limits, obviously, as I have already told you, for small scale industries, it will going to be very difficult to invest such a huge amount of uh, cost and as well as the technology is unable to automate all the desired tasks. Everything cannot be automated. Say for example, painting you can automate it, painting you can automate it, but whatever the placing of a gasket, say for example in the doors, you can make automated assembly with using a doors for a car. What about the mirror? At the edge of the mirror, you will have a rubber covering that has to be put manually. See, this is what the limitations. Everywhere you cannot use a, an automated system. That is the one drawback. A high initial cost that I have already told you. Small scale industries cannot offer this. Unpredictable development costs. Unpredictable development costs. And actually, this is also, we also should notice that a skilled operator is required and maybe if you check this if you check this it includes lot of sensors and feedback systems so this should have an electrical supply continuously one thing and second thing if you see this flow lines once the material if it starts moving from here till here it will not end up it should be a continuous process one mistake from any one of the machine tool will will recur the same mistakes will continue throughout the assembly line so you need to be very careful and it is the same case in all the different types of uh, uh, flow lines flow lines first of all my dear friends i'm so sorry flow line means the series of operations which are arranged to move a raw material till the finished product is called as a flow line then the sequence of operations are the line to which the material flows from the initial point to 
the end point is called as the flow length now irrespective of the flow length whether it may be a line or it may be circular or it may be a radial or it may be l shaped u shaped or rectangular anything that is what the major drawback of this automated flow line is one mistake at the beginning or from the any one of the machine tool the mistakes will keeps continuing till it enters and it may hamper the or it may continue with the rest of the uh, parts also rest of the work pieces or materials also this is what the major so you need to be very careful with the sensors that you are using and the routine checkup is required one major advantage is that the time will reduce us the time will reduce us up to 200 times than the conventional ones for example that means if you are taking 200 minutes to fin to finish the product with an automated system you can take only 2 minutes to finish the product that is what the major advantage of this automation system now when you are having a automation system i was talking about the instructions what you are giving to this machine tool and whatever the instructions you are give, giving it to individual machine tool is very much important in light of that we will go for a buffer storage and security so what do you mean by this buffer storage stack buffer storage system is a temporary storage location for goods being processed that means that means this one raw material which is going over here it will be undergoing some process over here then it will move to this second position and it will be subjected to the other processing of mechanical uh, uh, of second process and this will be subjected to third process of the material so in between the process of the first machine tool and second machine tool in between this we will have a buffer storage that means it will store the information regarding its a temporary storage of the location for goods being processed that means the goods the number of products or the number of items that has been passed it is located in between processing stations whose processing times are significantly different that is what it is maybe my dear friends you even you can ask what is the processing time required for this one process may not be the same as the processing time for this material and this machine tool and it may not be same for the machine tool of the third one and it may not be everything will vary correct everything will vary and the buffer storage is the one which stores and which is being located within the processing stations and it stores the location for goods being processed that is what buffer station no workstation breakdown analysis what is the breakdown workstation breakdown analysis in this context there are upper bound approach and lower bound approach a breakdown analysis means this is a workstation in the workstation is there any breakdown or it may be because of the uh, failure of the sensors or it may be increased productivity or there may be n number of reasons for the breakdown so workstation breakdown analysis can be done in two ways one is upper bound approach and the second one is <coughs> lower bound approach in these cases in the upper bound appro approaches the work part is unaffected by the station malfunction and there is no reason remove the part in the upper bound approach what happens the work part is unaffected though there is a failure of some machine tools the work part will not be affected by the station malfunction that means if there is any problem arises in the work station that will not affect the work part and there is no reason of reason to remove the part or the work piece or the material or the element or the product that is what the upper bound approach the lower bound approach is the one thing where the break tool must be replaced at the work stage the tool may be a failure of the tool or failure of the machine uh, machine tools we have to replace it and the part must be removed from the line and cannot proceed to the next stations for additional processing now here if there is any in the upper bound approach what happens if there is any failure of the machine tools the failure will be in such a way that we can it will not affect 
the work part by the station mark functioning and there is no re reason there is there is no need to remove the work piece or a part but what happens in the lower bound approach is we have to remove the work piece that means if there is any breakdown over here if there is any breakdown over here i cannot process in the upper bound approach what happens i can replace this and i can correct it and i no need to remove this and i, I will pass the same material or work piece to the next station but what happens in a lower bound approach i have to remove this and i have to remove this also. that is what we call it as a lower bound approach okay next one is an automated assembly lines automated assembly lines okay i just i'll quickly go through this automated assembly lines automated assembly lines as we have already discussed about this automated production line quite similarly we will go with assembly linings so in the automated assembly lines what is suited for automated transfer line or automated assembly lines which are suited for high production demand stable product long product life and multiple operations when you have a multiple operations when you have a long product life and stable product stable means the product doesn't change say for example production of cars production of cars the doors doesn't changes for for maybe around 10000 of products or maybe 1 lakh of products stay it will be stable so that is what we call a stable product and high production demand that is okay what are the benefits low direct labor uh, content direct uh, low direct labor content that means the labor content will be very low low product cost because of the cost think you will be looking out for high production cost high production demand the cost of production will be very low it's the same thing if it is for the low demand then this will be product cost will be high then high production rates production lead time and wip or minimize okay next the factory floors wip means basically wip means it is nothing but work in processes work in processes okay uh, my dear friends next uh, class we shall uh, still time in some time is there okay this shall go through quickly the low direct labor content and then work in process wip means work in process are minimized factory floor space is minimized that is what based on the different uh, flow lines we can minimize the floor space okay next assembly lines automated assembly refers to the use of assembly involves the joining together of two or more separate parts to form new entity which may be assembly or sub assembly okay that is what i was just talking about it if you take a car assembly you will take it to see you will add the floor four wheels and then you will add the doors and you will add a bumper you will add a roof and you will have add a glasses everything so this is called as a joining together of two or more separate parts to form a new entity which may be assembly or sub assembly automated assembly refers to the use of mechanized and automated devices to perform the various functions in an assembly line or cell automated assembly uh, that is what it is very clear i just uh, if you go through we are short of time automated assembly systems performs a sequence of automated operations to combine multiple components into a single entity which can be a final product or sub assembly that means to say that my dear friend there will be sub assemblies say for example you will have a production of uh, assembly lines i'm so sorry uh, you will have a production lines automated production line for the car car doors you will have a automated uh, uh, production lines for the wheels you will have the separate things for all the individual one and finally after the automated production line at the end there will be an assembly system automated assembly system where the finished product from the automated production line it will take everything and it will finish it by joining two or more separate parts to form a complete a bigger or a finished product that is what the idea behind of this assembly lines what is the need for an automated assembly system what is the need for this automated assembly system high product demand stable product design 
and then the assembly consists of no more than a limited number of components. This is what uh, one thing actually, the major difference between a production line and an assembly line. Assembly line will always take a finished product from the production line, whereas the production line will have a raw material which will be converted into a finished product. Is that clear? Now, what is the need for this automated assembly line is high product de demand. When there is a more demand for the product, stable product design, and then the assembly consists of no more than a limited number of components. That means there should be a minimum number of limited number of components are it being expected to the assembly. Obviously, my dear friends, when you have only one element and you want to assemble it, it is not possible. What do you mean by an assembly? Assembly means it is just joining of two, three, four materials to form a fixed <coughs> or a final product. Say, for example, if you want a chair, you want a four legs. <coughs> so when you want to make assembly of a chair means you want a four legs and two hand rest and one uh, back support and one part correct right so the minimum number of components it is required that is by default the product is designed for automated assembly that is what the need for uh, the objective of this automated assembly line so automated assembly versus transfer lines Work part reduced or smaller in size compared to the transfer lines. That is true. That means work part produced. Say, for example, in the transfer line or transfer lines, you can also consider it as a production lines. What happens in a production lines or a transfer lines? The number of products will be more. The end product will be more. Whereas in an automated assembly, the work product produced are smaller in size compared to the transfer. That means the quantity will be very less. How many you how many you how many number of uh, wheels that you produce in the product production lines? Maybe a thousand. The same thing you use that uh, wheels and assemble it for a car. How many you cannot go for a same number of thousands of cars in the assembly? That is what he says. Assembly operations do not have the large mechanical forces and power requirements. Obviously, so assembly operations doesn't require a huge number of that's a high large mechanical forces or power requirement will be very less and the size is very less compared to the transfer lines these are all the major advantage by the common sense or by illustrating with some examples so you can make out these points the major difference between a production lines that is a transfer lines to the automated assembly it is only because second point i just i will highlight it once again in the assembly production doesn't require large mechanical forces because you are not manufacturing anything you are just handling the finished product in a major uh, assembly line that means one one more point to be noted is automated assembly lines needs to be very accurate and precise no margin for error in even in the transfer line there is no margin for error but when it is compared to that in assembly lines, the margin for error will be very less. Okay, the size is very less compared to the transfer lines, obviously, because the number of products which are coming out of the assembly will be very less. Hence, the transfer lines will have a more uh, size compared to the automated assembly lines. Okay, my dear friends, we shall uh, end up over here because the time is getting over. We shall continue with the next class with uh, uh, that same thing next class we shall go for uh, problematics